Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be building a bottom navigation bar in Jetpack Compose. Let's get started. Let's jump straight into Android Studio and create a new project and an empty Compose activity. Let's call this bottom navigation bar example. And uh, we will choose API 34 and hit finish. Great, and now that Gradle is done installing, let's go ahead and get started on our project. So first thing we want to do is we want to go into the libs.versions.toml file, and we want to add a couple of, uh, we, and we want to add one dependency, and that dependency is uh, for navigation. So let's add navigation compose. And the latest version as of this writing is 2.8.9. So let's go ahead and add that there. And then we'll add that to our library here. And that is Android X Navigation Compose. Uh, the name is Navigation Compose and version ref is the one that we just created right up here. Perfect. All right, now the next step we need to do to add this dependency to our project is go to our app build.gradle file and we will scroll down to the dependency section and we will add our new dependency here. So this is an implementation of libs dot Android X dot navigation dot compose. Great. All right. And now that we've added those, we need to be sure that we, we sync our Gradle project so that our project now knows that we've added those dependencies. Perfect. And now that that's all ready to go, we are ready to start building out our project. So our navigation bar is really it's is really a separate component. However, it lives in uh, a, a section of the scaffold, and because of that, I like to break this out into its own package. So we're done with our Gradle script. So we'll go back over here to our main package, and we will create a new package and call this tab view great and inside this tab view we're going to create a new file that is a Kotlin class and we will call this tab view all right, now our tab view takes a couple different items, and so let's go ahead and add those first. So we will create a data class that is a tab bar item, and these are the various pieces of content that will be displayed inside each of our tabs on our bottom navigation bar. So every one of these items will have a title that is a string. They will have a selected icon, which is an image vector. They will have an unselected icon and they will have a badge count, which is optional. Great. And that's what each tab bar item will have for right now. Now we're ready to jump straight into building our view. So we will add a composable and this will be a fun of tab view. Now this tab view takes a list of tab items and we don't need that one and it will also take a nav controller. Great. All right and now we are ready to start creating this tab view. So we need two properties before we start getting the actual getting into the actual view part. We need a nav back stack entry uh, by nav controller dot current back stack entry estate. That's exactly what we need. And then we've got one more parameter that we need access to. So let's create that now. And that is our current destination, which is our back stack entry destination. All right, and with that, we are ready to start building out our view. So our navigation bar 
we'll take a list of our tab items. Oops, misspelled that word there. There we go. So this will take a list of our tab items and iterate over each one of those. And for every one of those, we want to check if our item is selected. And to do that, we will figure out if our current destination uh, dot hierarchy dot any and what this does is it checks to see if the route that we are on currently matches the title of our tab bar item which is what we use here in just a second to display the individual views. So let's go ahead and let's create our nav navigation bar item. So our navigation bar item, we'll check to see if the property is selected. And then we will pass an on click modifier to tell it what to do when we click on these items. So what we want to do is we want to navigate to the tab bar item dot title and we want to uh, only have one of these active at a time. If you don't include this, uh, it will allow you to add multiple tab items on your navigation stack at a time. And so we want to say that we only want one tab bar item active at a time. In other words, if you had a home button and a more button and you clicked home five times, it would add five home tabs to your navigation stack which was obviously not great for, for, for performance. And we also want to choose restore state. Great, and we don't need that comma there. And with that, we're ready to move on to our icon. Now, I like to create a separate composable just for the icon, just because it's got a little bit of logic in there and it helps keep our navigation bar item a little cleaner on the API. So we will call this a tab bar icon view and this will take a couple things this will uh, tell us if it is selected and it takes our tab bar item now before we start getting too carried away building out this tab bar tab bar icon view there's one more view that I like to build to to help clean things up and that is another composable called tab bar badge view. Now this gives us the ability to update our tab bar badge view by itself without uh, affecting anything else. And so we will say if our count is not null, then we want to create a badge and we want that badge to display our count. And we want to import the material three version of that. There we go. Great. All right. Now back to our tab bar icon view. We are ready to use this new tab bar badge view that we just created. So let's create a badged box. And we'll pass our badge, which is our tab bar badge view. And the count is item dot badge count. There we go. And then inside our badge box, we want to display an icon that has an image vector. Uh, and if it if our item is selected, we will display the selected icon. Otherwise, we'll display the unselected icon. This will allow us to use a filled icon when our item is selected and an unfilled icon when it's not to give another visual indicator to the user as to which tab they're on. And our content description will just be the title to help keep everything uh, working well with accessibility. And with that, we are ready to come back up here and finish out our tab bar item. So we will use our tab bar icon view and we will pass the item is selected and the individual tab bar icon. And then there's one more thing we need here, which is our label. And our label, we will pass the text 
for our tab bar item. And with that, our tab view is done and ready to go. And we are ready to move back over to the main activity and start uh, implementing that code. So let's go back over to here in our main activity class. Now there's a little bit of setup that we need to do to display this. And so one of those things is creating our tab bar items. So we'll say home tab and it is a tab bar item and the title is home. The selected icon is the icons.fill.home and otherwise it's the that one perfect. And then we'll create another tab called alerts. And we will use not the icon.fill.home, but we want notifications or the outlined notifications if it is unselected. There we go. And then we'll create another tab called uh, settings tab. And it is the settings, filled settings icon or the unfilled settings icon. And then let's create one more tab called more. And it uses the menu icon in both settings. There we go. All right. Now there's one more thing that we want to do here is we want to actually display a badge on our notification or alert tab. And so let's pass that a badge count of, let's give it seven. All right. And now that we've got all of these items, let's create a list based on those. Perfect. And then we will need to instantiate our nav controller. There we go. Now we don't need the screening stuff right now, so let's go ahead and get this out of the way. And we'll remove it from here too. There we go. And now inside our scaffold, we will create a bottom bar, which will be our tab view and the tab items will be our tab items and our nav controller will be our nav controller. There we go. And inside of our main view, we are ready to start giving ourselves the ability to navigate between our views. So let's add our nav host here and our nav host takes our nav controller and our starting destination uh, is not going to be a home text like that. It will be our home tab dot title. And then we will route to our views. First, let's go ahead and import the nav controller. There we go. All right. Now going back to our views. So we've got our home tab, we've got our alerts tab, our settings tab, and our more tab. And with that, we are ready to give this a shot. So let's click play and run it on our simulator and try it out. Let's break this window out here. There we go. All right, so you can see we're on our home tab. We've got our home view. We're on our alerts tab and our alerts view. Our settings tab and our settings view. And our more tab and our more view. And now also we've got a back stack that when we click back, it also selects the previous tab that we were just on. Perfect. And with that, please like and subscribe and share and feel free to share this video with all your friends. And if you leave a comment, just be nice about it. That's all I ask. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.